You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are. Thank you again for joining us. As always, my name is Paul. My name's Rob. Super excited to be here with you. Thank you for joining us. Been a couple weeks actually since we've been in these chairs. Been doing a little traveling, a little working mm-hmm. out of town, and uh, working on some deadlines. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. That's a lot for going sure. on, but it's very exciting. We're very thankful and uh, grateful that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Yeah, and honestly grateful this uh, for this question uh, as we predicted the release of the M30 by DJI, the new portable, foldable Matrice series drone. And I think this question is teed up just perfectly to kind of get the question answered and rock and roll into that as uh, new drones are hitting the market. It's an exciting time to say the least. You know, we got the news too about the recommendations from the ARC on the BVLOS, which would really fundamentally change uh, the certificate game, Rob. I mean, adding multiple levels of new certificates. Yeah, I think that's interesting on a lot of levels, but not the least of which is it seems like it's a step towards taking the industry more seriously. Yeah, that yeah, right? that's a very important point. Yes, it, it sure is. And allowing also for these more advanced operations to be done by actual drone pilots instead mm-hmm. of CFIs. So uh, it's nice to see that we are making uh, some progress here. It'll be interesting, though, to see what recommendations the FAA actually uh, takes and uses, especially with the administrator having just resigned. Will that play any part in the delay of the rollout of this? It'll be interesting to say the least, but uh, the future is bright. Yeah. It, it's also going to be interesting to see you know, how these new recommendations would coincide with remote ID rules. And I say that because, you know, we still haven't gotten a final ruling on that remote ID case. It's kind of, we're all, you know, waiting pins and needles uh, on what's going to happen here. So, you know, all these things do have a sort of kind of domino effect on the other things. So it'll be very interesting to see what comes about uh, this year in the drone industry. It'll be a, it'll be a shaker year for sure. So Yeah, absolutely. In terms of that case, what's the status? Have all arguments been made and they're just waiting on a decision? Is that where I we're at? I believe that's where we're at. Yes, I emailed uh, John and uh, our friend from Race Day Quads asking where we're at, and we're pretty much just waiting for that decision. It's kind of beyond the time that we are expecting to hear, so it'll be very interesting to say the least as far as what comes of that. Yeah, very, very true. So cool. that said, we've got a great question today uh, for yeah. everyone out there. We are back to in-person trainings. We've got flight mastery, which if you're ready to, you know, gain confidence, if you're ready to take your flight skills to the next level, you got to join us for flight mastery. You know, adjoining that uh, flight mastery class is also a mapping class. We've got classes coming up in Dallas, in Denver, and we have the experience training, which is a conglomeration or aggregation of lots of our classes put together, but also uh, powered by a real world drone job. You know, one of the things I keep hearing, we've had a lot of experience calls. It's awesome to see this class filling up, Rob. And the, the same thing I keep hearing is, will I be able to use the footage Uh, for my own portfolio. And that's kind of the point of doing the drone job is to obviously understand the systems involved to do it, you know, rapidly, but efficiently and effectively, but also be able to utilize that stuff uh, for, you know, our students. And I think that's a powerful thing. If you want to check it out, go to experience.thedroneu.com for all of our other trainings, thedroneu.com, scroll down to events and you can see uh, what we have uh, coming up. Also, good news is uh, we're going to release here soon. We just had a new hire at Drone U, pretty big deal, a uh, familiar face, and uh, he will be at our trainings from here on out. Very excited about that as as a whole. So yep. 
Yeah. Anyway, thank you to everyone and your support for the show. Thank you for everyone who is a Drone U member. Also, I would recommend if you haven't checked out that rapid ortho mosaic class where we go over how to create uh, ortho mosaics cheaply and effectively for things like construction, make sure you check that out. It's uh, 90 minutes of uh, a lot of information, lots of power too. So I would say also a great primer for, you know, uh, mapping class as a whole. So check that out and uh, let's get to this question. Hi, my name is James from Houston, and I'm interested in getting into the drone industry. I've flown a drone before in the uh, Army, and so I was looking at buying a Mavic 3 and a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. But one thing I've noticed about the Enterprise Advance is that there's a lot of review videos, but not a whole lot of people seem to be using it as I uh, look around for videos. And so I'm, I'm kind of wondering, is this drone kind of being uh, thrown to the wayside by DJI or is it just people just haven't really figured out how to harness the full potential of it? Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, James. Appreciate it. And by the way, just on listening to that question for the third time, heard that you're in the Army. So thank you for your service. Always appreciate um, the guys and ladies such as yourself who give uh, of yourselves to do that for our country. So anyways, um, Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance versus the M3 is essentially what I heard. Um, that's an interesting perspective. I appreciate it. Sounds like he's done some of his own research, mm -hmm. right? Getting on YouTube, trying to figure things out, but he's not seeing a lot on the, on the M2E. I, I wonder if that's, that drone's just a little advanced for sort of the, just the, the, the YouTube paradigm, I'll call it. I mean, I think the, I think the audience for YouTube, um, uh, there's definitely an audience for YouTube. Maybe defining that audience may not be the easiest thing, but I would say more uh, enterprise information and industrial information is probably going to be harder to find on YouTube. Now, that said, I don't think it negates his point either that he's not seeing a lot on the M2 EDA, uh, which we have sitting right here, because, you know, it is a more advanced drone. But I think he does have a point, which kind of tees up, you know, the point of talking about the new uh, DJI M30. It's almost like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance and the Matrice 300 had a drone baby, Rob, and That's created... a big baby. It is a big baby. You know, this is, this is a huge... Anyway. Like a 10-pounder. Uh, yeah, for sure. It came out fat and strong. Uh, but uh, that said, that portable folding kind of Matrice... Uh, series drone, I think is the, the second part of his question, you know, is DJI kind of moving that to the wayside and going into newer enterprise equipment? I think the M2 EDA is not the only drone that is being moved, quote unquote, to the wayside, meaning uh, DJI, I think, is also moving the Phantom to the wayside. We, he we have heard rumors that Phantom production has pretty much stopped, and uh, we know that Phantom inventories across the country are dwindling which is is an interesting facet in itself. I could see businesses literally popping up, Rob, of like refurbishing phantoms and getting them back in the air because they are the cheapest, most efficient tool to do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but the new M30 takes the uh, M2 or Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance to a whole new level. Yeah. So, but this still has a lot of use. And the thing about it is, based on what we've seen with the new drone, is it seems like four of these in terms of size. It, it so is. So this is still so stinking compact. It is. Yeah, that M30T, uh, that's the thermal version. M30 doesn't have thermal. Think of like the H20 uh, camera payload from the M300 where you've got that laser range finder. You've got the wide camera and you have the zoom camera. Uh, add the T and now you've got a thermal camera to it. But like Rob's saying, it is a much bigger drone, but it is also portable, right? It's foldable to be able to fit in a much smaller case because because DJI was listening to their audience and realized that we've got to make a more portable, more flexible aircraft that can be deployed faster to really service the needs um, of our clients as a whole. So, you know, it also takes the M2 EDA to a new level when you've got dual batteries, you've got battery redundancy now. You know, it's not just 32 times of zoom, it's 200 times zoom, which is just unbelievable. That's, that's a bit of a jump. That is a bit of a jump, <laughs> yes. So specifically for James, he's asking about this, and and he <laughs> he might not have even wondered about the uh, the new drone yet. But uh, 
this versus the M3 and and getting solid use out of this after paying for it or the M3, I mean, it's still, there's still opportunity out there for this drone. Oh, 100%. Right. Yeah, 100%. And it'll be interesting, too, on the M30 because we've got a new remote, a new pilot app. Uh, they're calling it DJI Pilot 2. Supposedly there's new mapping stuff in there. So I will just preface this and say that, you know, we haven't had a chance to fly it just yet. Uh, we are planning on getting one here very shortly. Uh, but that said, I mean, to your point, Rob, yeah, the M2 EDA still has a lot of value a lot of power i think that the m30 though in regards to his question on solar stuff might be uh maybe I'm mixing questions, but um, might be a uh, better opportunity for him because, you know, one of the, when we think about drones that compete with one another, right, you've got DJI in one corner that's building triple payloads, higher end cameras, tighter zoom, you know, and they're trying to make a much more robust platform of drone. The new docking station. The docking station. The fact that pretty incredible. if you think about it on the M30T, it's also got a removable payload. Yeah. And so you're going to be able to upgrade that drone. Well, you think about the competitors to DJI, you know, there's a few of them out there. We've got Sony with the Airpeak. We've got Freefly with their Astro. We've got uh, the Vesper, you know, um, and we've got Skydio. And, you know, Skydio's big thing is, oh, well, you can fly safe or closer and safer uh, without human intervention. And DJI is saying, uh, we're going to negate that argument with the 200 times zoom where you don't even have to fly that close. Don't worry about it. You'll be safe the whole time anyway. And so we're really mm. seeing, you know, competition ramp up. And before any of you uh, make assumptions on, uh, you know, my personal opinions regarding drone companies, competition is going to be good for all of us, no matter what. So I think this continues to push the envelope. And I think overall seeing this new drone is fantastic. Um, that said, uh, you know, drones are, one of those things that, uh, frankly, they're going to always evolve and you've got to make a decision. Do I buy the new drone and have a longer life with that? Or do I buy the M2 EDA, you know? Yeah, but it does sound like uh, the M2 EDA is, and obviously budgets are always part of the conversation. And the M30, the new drone is probably going to be twice this, right? Especially with thermal. Yeah, that's so true. So that's going to be very expensive. And uh, but again, it depends on your overall perspective on what you want to do with uh, with any drones that you have and what your business might look like and what goals you have, what uh, what experiences you have. You mentioned that you flew drones in the in the army, so maybe you've got some experience that you could leverage right away that would allow you to get the most out of the M30 versus uh, something that is less expensive. So it might be it might make more sense for you than the next guy to go spend money on the M30. But obviously every situation is unique. But the bottom line in terms of his question is that this is still a real solid drone. It is. And one thing I will say as far as the uh, mapping for solar stuff is sometimes we have to, you know, fly uh, parallel to the actual uh, solar panels. And so that might be easier with an M30. But, Rob, I think, you know, this is where we leave it because, honestly, it comes down to price point and what you want to do with it. And that M30 might just offer you more. So Indeed. But anyway, thank you for the questions. If you have a question, go to askdroney.com, upload those questions. Thanks again for everyone's support. We do appreciate it. Check out those new uh, upcoming in-person trainings. Check out the new classes we have for members. And if you are in a drone team or program, check out propsflightschool.com. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. 